Hello and warm welcome from my side. Today, let's unlock the advanced possibilities within SAP Data Sphere, especially Data Builder. Let's have a deep look into that tool within SAP Data Sphere to get a clue how to set things up and to improve your business by the SAP Data Sphere and by using Data Builder. In this video, we will we will see how to use the SAP Data Sphere Data Builder. We will see how to add table, use a table to do graphical views, to generate SQL views and maintain them. We will create a new entity relationship model, a new analytical model, new data flow, a replication flow, a transformation flow, an intelligent lookup where you can uh, build up more insights into your data by joining them based on rules and a task chain. Okay, let's start. In my former videos, I explained how to generate a space and maintain it, also assigning user. And also in a, another video, I showed you how to use the connections part. That means this is a connection to source systems where we would like to extract data from. And to, in today's video, we would like to focus on the data builder. This can be found on the left side uh, by clicking on data builder. Here we are. The table section here is the main part where you can design new tables or create new tables and also adjust existing tables. By clicking on this icon, you will get an, you will be prompted by a new uh, screen, and then in, in here you can give the table a name. Let's call it um, own customers. You see, the technical name is directly insert. Let's use rational, rational relational data set. And um, these are the main settings. And under columns, you can add columns. For example, customer number. Oh, the business name, let's use this customer number. It's a string of 100. I can change it easily by clicking on it and say, oh, I would like to have only 10. I will add another one, which is customer name. I leave it as 100. The customer has also, the customer master data has also a street. Let's enrich it a little bit due to long street names, 150. Then a city. That should be enough. And then I also add a country to be precise here. OK, that's everything. This is um, a short table. And you, let's use the key it identica identicates that this is the table key I made. I will make the customer number as a key because this should appear only once. Automatically, this is set to not null because this needs to be insert. What you can also do is to associate, associate with another table. That means let's um, delete this one. Now we have a customer number, street, city, and country. Let's rename it customer, customers. You can describe your business purpose. This is a customer table, table without names. Okay, let's save and deploy it. You will be prompted if this is okay, what you uh, entered already, safe. 
then let's create create another table. Now I can close this one and add another one. This is a customer names. Let's add also call him again. Customer customer number. Customer number. This was 10 in the other table, but let's make this as unique. Add another one, which is the customer name. Okay, we leave it as it is and deploy it also. Now we have two tables. Let's step in the first table again with the customers. And now let's go to the section association, associate, associations. Now I'd like to add one with uh, as a text association. That means I have here a table with customer number, street, city, and country. And with this text association, I can assign a table where the text for that spe uh, specific uh, data is stored. But you see, it's not uh, my my table is not here. Let's go back and check what we set for customer names. We identified this is a semantic usage is of re relation, relation, relational data set, but we need to switch it to text. After deployment, let's check what, what, what the Okay, you see it will be prompted that we need to define also a language column. Language. Uh, and we need to set it to text because we identified that this is a text one. And we need to identify the language as the key also. Now we have everything in place which identifies a text table. If we went back to customer, this is the cust oh, sorry, customer name table. We go to customers. And now we try to do an, so in text association again. And now the customer name table is appearing. We can launch it by clicking on that one, but by marking it, by marking it, and click OK. We need to identify the mapping table, which is the customer number. Seems to be OK. And now we can deploy it again. Let's do a data preview. It should be empty because nothing is in that. No. The text is not showing up here because uh, this is not part of the data preview. The other possibilities to create table, you can do it via an upload of CSV files. For that purpose, I prepared some files. One on one hand side, the customers.
you will see the customers which are in my file looks okay and i deploy it i name it customers oh okay it's existing because we created master data Let's import other files also. Uh, I have also sales documents, which includes some information. A sales document, a customer, and a sales district. Let's deploy this also. Uh, master data now we have the sales document master data the customer master data let's import the uh, further files the sales organizations now this is the same file we do not need import transactional file. Where we have the sales org, sales document, and the value. You will see that we have some issues. And that means we have some values inside which are not right. Let's see what we are having here. Ah, we have commas inside instead of instead of points. Now I switch the conversion format and now see that it should it's look like that everything could be could be imported. And let's see, deploy, transaction, or let's name it uh, sales values. See, it's deployed. Let's check if we go in there. This is what the system generates out of it. Let's see if all values are imported. And if the rule validation works. Looks okay. Okay, now we had a look to creating new tables based on a CSV file or via using this button with create new tables. Let's use a graphical view. By clicking on graphical view, we got a new screen. 
you have a possibility to expand the left side by uh, um, by clicking on the small icon here. We see all the tables which we are having, also them which we defined first. We have views and also some other possibilities here. We have the possibility to use intelligent lookups. We will have to uh, have a look to this afterwards and also shared objects. Those shared objects coming from other spaces within the SAP data sphere. That means there is a possibility that you have a central space where you have a lot of views or tables available and these tables and views can be shared to further spaces. Here it seems that we have a central space with some some tables and also views available, which is shared with MySpace. Also views. But let's use our, our tables here. Okay, we, we, saw, we imported the sales values and also the customer master data and sales documents. Let's drag and drop sales documents inside here. Here we see that we have sales documents, customer, and sales districts. Remember, we also uploaded customer master data. It was, uh, we have a customer here, but we have some master data also here, which we would like to have also in the result data set. Let's drag and drop this customer master data on the sales document master data. Then you get a screen, You uh, what you would like to do, a union, a join or replace. Let's do a join. See, it's automatically created and the system tries to map the, those columns which are relevant. Okay, here we see then the inner join, but let's switch it to left outer, left outer join because I do not know if we have all customers in the master data file which are coming from the sales document one. You see that the, the the result view is generated automatically by adding also the new columns coming from the customer master data. Let's rename it um, sales reporting view. Due to the fact that we would like to consume it within within uh, SAC afterwards or further tools, we need to click here, expose for consum consumption that we can consume it in further tools. But now we have only a relation, relational data set. To, to, to use it for reporting, we need to have one, minimum one key figure available. Remember, we upload or, or upload also the sales values. Let's do a drag and drop also to this one here and do a, uh, do a, a join. No, we have the sales values inside. Sales organization, sales documents uh, could not be matched because the name is different, but let's use it. Do a left, do a left outer join. But this is essential to switch it. We would like to get all the values for, from sales documents, but let's try to assign the customers. Let's drag and drop this on the map uh, to be mapped one. Now the system tries to map the sales document to that sales document and get get then also the attributes out of it. And you see directly the, the key uh, the columns are added now let's try to get a preview first great you see that the sales document number customer sales district customer name everything is mapped looks looks great but we, as i mentioned we would like to consume it within SAC. Let's use the analytical data set. This is depreciated, but this is uh, working. And here we have value. 
I drag and drop this value to measures because an analytical data set needs to have a value. Looks okay. Let's rename the business name without underlines. And now let's deploy it. We will be prompted because this is a depreciated one. We should afterwards switch it to analytical data set. Okay. Let's deploy it. Now it's done. Let's recheck again after deployment. Great, it is working. Now you have a clue how to generate and create a new graphical view within SAP Data Sphere and Data Builder. Now let's have a look to the new SQL view. Let's click on it and we get a new screen. It's an empty screen. What you can do is now you can consume data out of tables or views via an SQL statement. Oh, that means we can, you can put in select, select star from, and now you can use drag and drop. Remember, we created a view for sales reporting. You can drag and drop it into the SQL one. With this, you can valid, validate your SQL view, and you see that the system automatically generates from a star the, the columns, and you can check the data via this button here. Great. What you can do is you can adjust your SQL view by, for example, deleting columns. And you get all will be prompted if you um, if there are some possibilities to yeah to um, to add or enrich your SQL view. You can refresh the data by clicking on small icon here, and you see everything is working. You can also add a where statement. Where does you also be, it will be prompted here? Yeah? What columns are available? What keywords you can use? Co customer equal one, for example. Let's do a reload. No, only customers one should be. Yes, you see, it is working. You can also add some specific keywords for for uh, from SQL. Uh, let's reuse it or use it by oops, sorry, customer the sum of the value, and then uh, where customer one and group by. That means we will only get those figures from customer one. But we will get the sum of all the values from customer one. SQL is valid. And this is the sales of customer one. You can also add as um, sales to be more precise and not okay. Yeah, sales. Let's go ahead it. And you see that the volume is renamed. Mm, let's save this. It rechecks the SQL statement, gives us prompt. Um, let's use it sales. Reporting SQL view. Okay, let's save.
And here you have the same uh, functionalities. You can define fact tables, dimensions, texts, hierarchies, or an analytical data set if you would like to reuse it in another tool. Therefore, we, use it, we switch it to analytical data set, expose for consumption. And now we can replay it because we made some changes. What you can do also do within select statements is joints with further tables and views, whatever you would like to do. Everything is possible here. Okay, let's close it. Now let's come to the entity relationship model. With this, you can build up some star schemas. That means in the middle, you have the transactional file, which holds yeah, the, the transactional data and you can also assign then some master data. Remember, we have the sales value table with all the sales we are having, with sales organization, sales document, and value. You can do a drag and drop into that area here. We also have some sales documents and customer master data. Let's drag and drop customer uh, the sales documents also. And now we have two tables. We see that the sales document here could belong to that one. Let's assign that. By clicking on this icon, you can drag and drop to this new or additional added table. And now the system cannot find the right assignment because the name is different. But by a drag and drop, we can assign it. Now we see that this, this table is joined to this table via sales document. But we have also another table in place, which is customer master data. We can also drag and drop it. And remember, here we have the customer. And here also, we can do a drag and drop. And now the system automatically generates the assignment because the number is the same and also the type is the same. We only, only need to check it. Looks OK. And now we can deploy this view. Let's in sales reporting ER model. OK. You can also add further tables to this view to get an really complex ER model, which can be further used then. Here we get a, summer, a summary of those tables which I which I used here. We can also, also can, add, can add them by adding a plus or by drag and drop from the left side. Okay, let's now move to the new analytical model. This is a really new one where you have dimensions, where you have texts and also the fact table in place. Remember, we have a sales reporting view here, which is an depreciated ones. It means this is supported by the SAP data sphere, but in future there will be a new one in place, which is then the analytical model. By clicking it, that means you, you open an existing analytical data set. You can click here, create analytical model, and the system creates automatically an analytical model for you. Out of this reporting view. Add the measure and also all the dimensions. Okay, let's try to deploy it. Sales reporting analytical model. Deploying. 
Well, let's check what the outcome is via the view and the preview we can display then the values at first the deployment needs to be successful okay Here we are, values coming up proper. Okay, these were the analytical model. To create a new analytical model without having an uh, analytical data, uh, data set in upfront, yeah, we need to have a fact table and also dimensions available. Therefore, I will import the CSV files again, but give it give them another name remember we have a transactional file which holds all the sales values we need to check them by setting it up to another then Let's deploy it and let's name it uh, sales values fact. Okay. This is needed because I need to change the type of the table afterwards to fact, because this is a fact table we would like to use in an analytical model afterwards you see this is a new one we created uh, here's a new one we created seconds ago and no, normally the day the CSV is imported as a relation relational data set we need to switch it to fact semantic type this is the we can use it or we can um, this is only uh, information let's leave it as it is okay what we need is further is a dimension let's import another CSV file again which are the sales documents. Remember in the sales data, we had a sales document and this is uh, this will be here now the dimension for it. Deploy. Sales documents dimension. After this is also deployed, we can start working with the new analytical model. Okay, let's try to do it. New analytical model. Oh, sorry, we need to identify the sales document dimension as a dimension table. This is done via changing the local table to dimension. Okay, this is done. Now we set this to dim. This is 
here done and we need to deploy it. Okay, let's check. Okay, get this error resolved. We need to change it to key because this is the key column and then we need to deploy it. We will be notified if the deployment is done. Deployed. Okay, great. Now we have a sales documents addition, uh, dimension available. Now it, let's go to the new analytical model. That means we have a fact table and a dimension. Now we would like to create a new one. We have a sales values fact table, which can be drag and drop into that area. Import. Now we have a fact table. Sales document. This is the, then we can jump to the definition of this sales fact table here. Remember, there is no dimension which can be used. No associated dimension. With an effect table, we can jump to the associations and, and add one. Here we find we'll find our dimension table, which is a sales document dimension. By clicking OK, we will be prompted and we need to map now the relevant information to the other one. This one should be mapped to sales documents. Let's deploy, redeploy the sales value fact table. Okay, now the association is shown here. Okay, done. Let's jump to the model. And let's see, let's delete it again and drag and drop it again to this area here. Import. mentions a measure uh, let's add the measure here the value the source field is let's calculate the measure count distinct value for example the dimension uh, let's use the sales document. Let's deploy it. But no associations found for fact tip. Here we have our dimension and our association. Let's save this new analytical model. Analytical with associations.
Okay, this was the creation of the analytical model. I see this is prompted here, we'll add the cube. Now the section new data flow. Data flow means we create a flow from one to another. That means, for example, let's use the sales values fact table. This is a source. You see that this is a source and also shown here. We can also add further tables, show the data, and do some, some other operators here. Uh, a join, for example. Let's use this one. And that's, we know that we have the sales documents available. Let's drag and drop it as a source. First, we do the assignment here. This is an inner join. We would like to have a left outer join. Or we can also, let's use the inner join. With the join definition, we would like, this is the definition from the sales values. And this is from the sales document master data. I drag and drop it to the sales documents. Because this is a unique key. Now I did this. Have this join now. Here you will be prompted what the error is, or you can also show it here. It's good, but let's add add a target table. We would like to add this table in a data sphere and do the storage there. Let's use the sales value storage table as a name. Okay, you see it's new. With this button on the right side at the top here, you can create and deploy the table. Yes, I would like to do it. This After the creating and deploying, we will be able to run this data flow. That means the day the system that SAP Datasphere takes the sales documents table, master data as a source, and also the sales values. The system will do the join and then save it in the new created table. And the mode here is append. That means every new record will be appended to that table. You can also turn cut and delete. That means recreate the table anytime or delete the table first. Now it's done. And with this small icon here at the top, well, let, let's deploy the whole data flow first. Sales value the data flow. This needs to be done first. And again, we will be prompted if this is done. Now it seems it is deployed. Now you see here the run status. No run was taken place. Let's run it. See, everything is updated here. Also the status here on the right side. That means we started the run and it's running. Check. Running. You can also schedule it. That means uh, if you would like to uh, to redo the run every hour, every day, you can schedule it with it. And with the right icon here, you can jump. So the data integration monitor where you can analyze the flow, what what happened. 
the C. Our run is ready and executed and it is completed. You see, we started the run, the data is uh, extracted, the operator is executed and the, the data is written into, into the new table. Let's check. Our back to the data builder. Let's do a refresh here. Or let's sort it descending. Here we have our data flow and the new created table sales value storage table. Let's go in there. This is created by the system, but let's check the content. Due to our data flow run, the data should be now available here within this table. And this table can be used further within. Oh, you see, no data inside. Let's go back to our data flow. Could be that we did the join wrong. Ah, you see, we mapped sales organization to sales document. This could not be right. Let's do it again. Remove this one by clicking on it and delete it. Back to our data flow, redeploy it. Now it's done. And here we can refresh again, or we can also run the rep uh, run the data flow again. Again, here. We can see that this is running and with a right mouse click here on a data integration monitor and open a new tab. We see the remote tables, we see the views and the flows, which we would like to see here. This is running. Let's analyze it. It's running already. Running SQL data flow is finished. Let's update the status here. Completed. Let's go back to our table and see if the data is inserted. Here we are, the data is there now. Great. Now we finished the new data flow. Let's move to the replication flow. The replication flow, you can start with the connection and also a target. That means select the source connection. These connections are taken out from the connections part. Let's use the SAP data sphere. It's easier to use for this example here. Add a source. Let's use, um, or let's create a new one. Oh no, source object. Let's uh, use a source object. We will use again our sales value, our main table. Okay, then let's use another one. Let's try to use defect table. Ah, okay. Let's go back and define a key for the sales values. This is our sales values table, the main one. Let's identify here. Uh, a key which is the sales document because the sales document is unique in this table.
let's wait until the changes are deployed okay great let's go back to our replication flow add a source object and let's try to use the sales values table again Now this should be a, should have a primary key. Let's use the customer table. Here we have the source object, which is a customer, and now we need to select a target connection. Let's use also the SAP data sphere. We can rename the object, which is uh, replication flow, that we can differentiate between both. Let's check what the result is. Okay, it's good. Let's deploy the replication flow. Okay, what? get an information here okay we need to add a we do not want to filter we would like to map auto map okay save Okay, projection name is uh, mapping. Now you see the mapping was missing and now let's do the activation. What's the problem? Okay, we need to mark them all. We need to create the target object. Let's um, use our customer table, which is a source here, customers. Go in there and save as. Let's use the same name, customer replication flow. Hello. Let's save it. And of course, we need to deploy it. Let's wait until it's deployed. Should not take so long. Done. Let's went back to the replication flow and uh, let's check if we have it named right. Okay. Check this one customer. Use the customer one and let's deploy it. Okay, let's use now the ah, uh, here is it. We will do the automatic mapping. It's done. The projection name, projection. Okay, let's deploy. It didn't. 
Ah, okay. This is not furthermore supported uh, that you that you uh, have the same the same source like um, the same target like this uh, like the source. But you can send data from data sphere to a specific target connection via this replication flow. To do a self self storage scenario, please use data flows instead. Okay, let's now move to the transformation flow. Within transformation flow, you have the possibility to transform your data. That means you can define the transformation. Let's check uh, the customer master data table. Customer master data table. Let's have a look inside in our data. Remember, we have a column of city, street, and also having the, the country in place. But for, for the city, we will see that we have in some cases, for example, for Germany, the postal code inside. Let's try to transform it into a new column. Here we have the transformation, but let's add now the customer master data table to this transformation here. By a drag and drop, the customer master data table is read and this is the outcome, the transformation view. But we would like to have the city split it or checked if we have a postal code inside. With this, with a new calculated column, you can put in ex expression. For example, you can search for all the functions here. Uh, let's use, uh, I know that there is a function available which is left. Left function can have a specific string from the existing one identified by a number. Let's use the left. You see the cursor is blinking here. It's used the column city and we would like to have five digits from the left. Okay, let's go back. Now we have a new column. Let's name it postal code. This is automatically added to the result view and let's check what data do we have. Now the system reads the customer must data, transform it, and add the new add the new column. And you see, oh, but here we see that this, it doesn't make sense because here we have another scenario than here. Let's adjust the postal code. For that, we have a function ready, which is named, for example, case. Means if case let's check if we have an uh, a space uh, if the this one uh, this character uh, this uh, are numeric values then let's put in the five digits otherwise it should be empty let's check if we have a function in place uh, with uh, a check of numeric Now, let's check if you have. Okay, let's do it in that way that we have a case 
when a customer three and four, then we will extract the city out of the data record. Otherwise, it will be a minus. Let's check what the outcome is. Here, let's see. For customer three and four, now the postal code is done. Let's go back to the main view. And here we now we need to add a new table as a target table. Let's name it uh, a target, customer target, customer uh, postal code target. Now we need to deploy it again. Yeah, ask how to name it. Let's customer postal code transformation. It's not customer transformation. In there. Let's put in the Okay, let's save it, deploy it. After the tip deployment is done, we can recheck it. successful let's recheck the data if everything is fine like we saw minutes before see the mapping is also correct We need to run it. Data flow is running now. Like the data flow, it's completed. And let's recheck the data. Great. Now we also finished the transformation flow with which we can transform data and load it into a specific table as a target. Okay, now we had ha a look into the new transformation flow. Now let's start with a really great tool to match, for example, master data to a specific lookup table with a new intelligent lookup. Let's launch it. For that, I uploaded two new tables which is the customer customers which needs to be geocoded and the geocodes in the input i will by a drag and drop i will place the customers which needs to be geocoded we have a customer we have a customer name street city and country we need to have a pairing uh, a pairing column and i drag and drop now the geocode information. Let's use those ones for the geocoding one. Also, it needs to be the customer. Customer. And here we have now the return columns, which is which should be latitude and longitude to geocode a customer. Now 
here we have an, an, a new object, which is a rule. Now I need I have a match match strategy which which is exact or fuzzy. Let's have a look to the data first. Within the customers to geo code, I have eight customers now. On the one hand side, we have the city and the country. You see the difference. In the city, I have sometimes the postal code inside or the at the end, the New York, Stuttgart and Ingolstadt and the countries. And within the geo codes, I have also the city and country. With the big with the big but we do not have only the city without postal codes at the end or in the front. With the exact match in the exact match, we need to define which columns should be compared. It means the country and the city. City to city and country to country. Before we can run it. We need to deploy it. Let's deploy it. Let's name it uh, customer to geo code intelligent look up. Okay, let's save and deploy it. We will be notified when the deployment is done. Should not take so long. Okay, great. Now let's let's start a run. With this run, the system evaluates my mappings regarding the exact match and give me an information how many records could be found and which not. You see, 63% are exactly matching. 38 are not matching. Let's see the result for our exact match. You see, matched, it means you have four or five customers which are matching absolutely but three which are not matching. That means those ones could not be found in the table due to the fact that here we have the postal code and CA at the end and here the postal code in front. It's not exactly matching. The country, yes, but not the city. Okay, let's try to add another rule. I would like to add a rule for the unmatched result records. In the, in the first screen, a uh, first step, we use the strategy exact match. Let's use the fuzzy match. We have some thresh, uh, thresholds which could be identified here and can be used, but um, let's st start with it. On the left hand side, for the columns, I need to identify which columns I would like to use for this rule. I select again city and country, and also on this side, this side, city and country. Now we have them identified. The rule, and now let's deploy, save and deploy again. And then let's check the result if the the system could found some further entries with fuzzy match strategy. Changes up to, to deploy to deploy. Okay, successful. Let's run it again. Sharing data. And now let's check the result. Oh great. Here you see that the system 
get everything assigned with our fuzzy match. That means at first we got 63% assigned due to the exact match, 38% not. And with our next rule, with the fuzzy match strategy, we got the rest completely assigned. Let's check the result if the system is right. Yes, you see here, uh, for example, Mountain View here has those latitude and longitudes like this ones, which have not the exact match in front. Okay, now you see what you can do with the intelligent lookup. You can look, uh, do a lot of rules and uh, uh, regarding exact and fuzzy match and get the right result after using it. This could be a good tool for um, enriching or checking master data against specific attributes or uh, characteristics and information to get the right result out. Okay, last but not least, we have the last icon here, which is a task chain. Task chain is a good possibility to put multiple steps in a sequence which should be executed and store data within a specific table or a run which should be executed. Remember, we have our, we have our data flow which was set up by us. We can do it via drag and drop and put it here. We have multiple possibilities here that you have an, um, the possibility to add a parallel step you can check if there is this everything is executed well, if everything is executed well, or only one. Or you can also add a further step here with adding plus. And you remember we had also a uh, transformation flow implemented. By a drag and drop, I can place it here. This is nearly the same like a process chain in the SAP BW system. You can also be notified if this is executed completely via email. But let's use it as it is. Now I deploy it, sales task chain for reporting. That means you can do steps here to prepare data which are necessary to do uh, to um, store the proper data in tables which are used then for reporting in SAC or in Power BI. Now let's save. Okay, it's deployed. Let's do the run. It's running. We can jump to the task monitor and see which steps are executing. Here we see the execution type, which is direct. This one means here we need to consent SAP that SAP can run schedules. Here you see under integration module, you see this small information and we, by clicking authorize we authorize sap to execute tasks let's go to flows here we see that this is missing let's go in here and let's start the uh, the chain again with 
cleaning up. Let's jump to the detailed information. Now we see that all the runs are executed. Let's finish it shortly. You can also go back to the data builder, execute the task chain or go into the task chain. Let's went back and see. It's failed again. Now we need to go to the monitor. Here it's completed. Let's go back to this was not up to date. I'll go back to the data integration one here. We need to set this up for every flow we would like to execute. Transformation flows. Here you see now it is completed. In task chains fails. Let's check. Content was missing. Let's rerun it. Okay, let's have a let's have a look if the run is completed now. Ah, oh, here the last run is completed. Let's check this in the data integration monitor. The first one was fa uh, failed, yes, but the second one was completed. We see it here. Uh, the first step is completed, and then he executes the sales value data flow and the customer postal code transformation. Great. Okay, then we are through. That means we covered all nearly all the topics within uh, data, the SAP data sphere data builder, we created new tables via um, a definition here, uh, the via defini defined by our by ourselves, or imported via CSV both possibilities we have. We use the graphical view to combine tables via join or it's also possible via union. We create a new SQL view where we can write down our uh, SQL statements by using the normal SQL language commands. We create an, a new ent uh, an entity relationship model where we also can build up star schemas to build up uh, really huge models. We used the new analytical model for uh, assigning or using fact tables with the dimension tables. We use the data flow with which you can store data in an, uh, after transformation in an additional table. The replication flow covers nearly the same, but you have the possibility to write data back to other systems not within SAP Dataspy, you can push the data into uh, Amazon or Microsoft cloud environments. We covered the transformation flow where you could, can do transformations for specific columns. We covered the really interesting topic, new intelligence lookup, where you can check master data against the validity. You can also uh, enrich data with lookups. 
And the last but not least, we covered the task chain where you can combine all those um, topics here. We can uh, put topics in the sequence regarding data loading, the data, uh, the data flow. You can add replication flows. You can add also transformation flows or intelligence look uh, intelligent lookups to store data. Um, like a, like a process chain, which can be then executed from time to time or periodic wise, and you can analyze it then within the data integration monitor. Okay, thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel if you like it.